Okay. Uh, before we move on and consider some of the other properties of the Bell operator, in this video, we just want to briefly consider what happens if we try to take the gradient of several scalar functions at once. We might have some scalar functions added together, for example, or perhaps we have some scalar functions multiplied together. So this, of course, is our basic operation here. Now, if we had two scalar functions that we were, say, adding together, so we had this kind of a situation, by definition then, this would be equal to the partial of that sum. with respect to x times i, plus the partial of that same sum with respect to y times the unit j vector, and again, the partial of that same sum with respect to z, and that would be the k component of the gradient vector. And it's not too difficult to see, in fact, it's probably pretty obvious to you that this first term here, we can write like this, partial of P1 with respect to X times I plus the partial of P2 with respect to X times the I unit vector. And we're going to get the same thing from these terms. So. When we're taking the gradient of two scalars added together, then that's just equal to the gradient of each of the individual scalars. So that's pretty straightforward to establish. What happens if we have a situation where maybe we have some scalar functions multiplied together? Let's just take a quick look at that and see where that leads us. So we might have, say, maybe we have the del operator operating on P1 times P2. And that will give us then the partial with respect to X P1 times P2, and that will be the I component of our gradient vector, plus the partial with respect to Y of P1 of that same product, that will be the J component of our gradient vector, plus the partial with respect to Z of the same product, P1, P2, and that will be the K component of our gradient vector. So here we're taking the partial derivative of two functions multiplied together and we know that what that's going to give us. We're going to have this kind of an expression. P1 hold that constant times the partial of P2 with respect to x times i plus now make this hold that constant and we're going to have the partial of P1 with respect to x times the i unit vector. And same thing for this, same deal for this. So from here we're going to have P1 times the partial of P2 with respect to y times the j unit vector plus P2 partial of P1 with respect to y times the j unit vector. And finally, for our last term, we're going to have P1 times the partial of P2 with respect to z. Now we multiply by the k unit vector, and we'll have P2 times the partial of P1 with respect to z times the k unit vector. So when we start, we want to take the gradient of two scalar functions multiplied together, 
that gives us this expression. When we break the terms apart, we get this expression here. And if we look at the first column now, here we have the partial phi through with respect to x times i, the partial phi through with respect to y times the j unit vector. Same thing here, on with respect to z times the k unit vector. So this column, if we add it up, gives us Not that any longer, but now we're going to have the gradient of phi 2 and throughout it has been multiplied by phi 1. So we're going to have this. And then over here, same thing, except now from this column we have the gradient of phi 1 and throughout it's been multiplied by P2. So, when we take the gradient of two scalar functors multiplied together, we get this expression. Which really if we had thought about it ahead of time, we probably could have predicted this. Because what we have, two functions multiplied together, and what do we want to do with these two functions? Well, essentially, we want to take their derivatives. That's what the gel operator is. It's a differentiation operator. So, when you have two functions multiplied together, and you want to take derivatives, what do you do? You hold the first one constant, and then take the derivative of that function, Plus, then you hold the second one constant and take the derivative of the first function. So it comes out exactly as perhaps as, it would, as the way we should have expected it to be. So, no big surprise there. We just wanted to point that relationship out to you that it's not difficult to derive. And also, again, that when we're adding them together, then it's just simply the gradients added together. So, no complicated surprises there. Now one other thing, before we close this video out, though, that we do want to point out to you, or to remind you again, that the Dell operator operates only on scalar quantities. What happens if we try to have it operate directly on a vector? Suppose we had some vector C and here's its components. And we had this kind of expression. What would that mean? Well, we just follow our definition then. I mean, here now the operating on C. So for the first term, we would have the partial with respect to x of c x i times the unit vector i. And this has no meaning whatsoever. And from the other terms here, we're going to run into the same kind of trouble. So this right here is entirely meaningless. So again, just to remind you, the Dell operator operates only on scalar quantities. It cannot operate directly on vector quantities. But before we close the video out, let's ask this question. This is the definition here of the Dell operator. What happens if we consider this to be, in and of itself, a vector? Can we perform typical vector operations then with the Dell operator? Can we take the dot product of the del operator with other vectors? Or can we take the cross product of the del operator with other vectors? And that's what we want to consider in the videos coming up. So come back, join us for those videos, and as we explore those questions, we're going to dig out some more rather interesting properties of the del operator. So join us for those videos, and we'll continue along with our series in vector analysis.